Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is my Jim Sniper. Uh, not to be confused with the Jim Sniper Custom, this is based on the Jim Ground type, except with a really big sniper rifle. Um, I always enjoyed using this in Battle Operation 1, so when I was trying to figure out what new to take into 200 point rooms, I grabbed this as soon as I saw it. It's quite good. It's, I really enjoy it, and this is going to be a decent round with it for a change, so. We actually have a couple of good rounds with me, uh, uh, with me piloting for the rest of the week, which, you know, it's a little rarer than, no, it's as rare as it sounds. You, you've seen me play. I'm not, a, I'm not a genius. But, yeah, so... Yeah, the thing about the Jim Sniper and the Sniper Custom is, as you can see, the Beam Sniper Rifle has a much longer reach than any of the other range, uh, long-range weapons. You just have to watch out, because uh, as long as that bar is yellow, you will overheat your rifle if you fire it again. So you have to wait for the blue to not overheat. Sometimes that's hard to do because the person you're trying to shoot is moving or they're endangering your teammates or something and you end up firing again too early. But, like that. So they managed to dodge me, but neither did they hit me. So now it's time to menace them with grenades because that's pretty much what I got at range. Because Jim Ground Type and the Jim Sniper, uh, uh, and the Jim Ground Sniper, thus by uh, extension, has no head bullets. Missed. They did not miss me, but it was not a solid hit. I keep trying to move left when there's no left there, but... Shot. Hit the leg. As you can see, that guy's nearly dead. And... Lined up and killed. Um, this... I, in case you missed it in the last video, this is probably a good time to mention... Uh, what MS Bop has learned about, uh, aka Maelstrom, has learned about scoping in and crouching and going prone. Oh man, I didn't think that shot was going to land. Um, scoping in provides a small damage bonus and it stacks with the damage bonus for uh, crouching or going prone. Of course, prone is, you know, higher damage bonus than just crouching. So I'm not going to get that guy from down there. I shouldn't even try. I might be able to reach that guy. Not quite, but closer than you'd think. I'm I'm happy with how they've uh, adjusted the grenade arc since the uh, since the beta. It's a little bit better, I think. They don't bounce as much either. They they explode on contact, which of course real grenades don't always do. Probably don't generally do. Um, you would probably notice that my. Uh, grasp of firearms and real-life military hardware is substandard at best. It is not my fort. I am in this for the fantasy and the robots. But... Yeah, so... Yeah, I am... As you can see, I'm doing significantly more damage now that I am prone and I am scoped in, so... I wish there were, like, multiple arrows to give you an idea of, you know, which bonuses you were getting, but... And I'm overheated again. I do that a lot. Like I said, there's that... It's difficult for me to manage the pressure between trying to hit the target and trying not to overheat your weapon. I would generally rather try and hit the target. And, oh man, I hope the power doesn't go out. The lights are flickering. But, yeah, and there's another... There's an enemy over there. Probably also trying to snipe. Or... Actually, it looks like a cannon type. So, yeah, they... Overheated again. I hit their shield. Yeah, like I said, it looked like they were going to move away. I wanted to try and catch them and, you know, destroy their head if I could. Because uh, crippling the head uh, reduces uh, damage by quite a bit. And, of course, also uh, makes your radar not quite function right. But, let's see. Just looking for a good shot. Ah, and there's my shot. And hit... Yeah, as you can see, not quite as much when I was crouching instead of prone. Um, person seems to be sticking around, and my uh, meter's blue. So, yeah, as you can see, they're prone now, so I did less. But I decided the kill shot was worth overheating, and that's a decision I stand by. 
And now I'm just trying to provide some long range support with medium range uh, tools like hand grenades. But I'm charged again, so it is time to uh, start firing. Basically, I was I did okay, but I was just simply put, I was very lucky in this match because nobody came over up the hill and tried to hassle me. I had a couple rounds in this where I managed to time and space it just right so that when they tried to jump up the hill at me, I was able to downswing them back down. That is luck. Just luck. It is not a thing that even with skill you can do on the regular. Um, it just it depends on their approach. It depends on yours. Um, I'm trying to shoot around the Zaku 1 and provide support. It's not really working. Uh, you can probably see the cannon type firing at me from over there, and here's the other place where I got lucky. The uh, person across the way had not played this game long enough to realize that the cannon does not have the reach. You can see the shells bursting in front of me. They are not connecting, they are not doing damage, they are not stunning, because it can't reach me. So... Basically, for as long as it decides to sit still, I can sit there and shoot it in the face. Which, as you can see, I did. And it decided to take off when, not when I was shooting at it, but when the other uh, cannon type, I think, was uh, uh, bursting shells in front of its face. But, and yes, that is a problem with just how it's set up. If you aim even slightly downwards and you're not at the very end of the cliff, uh, you'll just kind of shoot through the edge of the cliff. Not optimal. Where, what else can I shoot? But there's a shot that if that uh, light armor had not jumped, I probably would have connected with. And that shot I did connect with. All right. Yeah, so we're opening up our lead a little bit. And as you can see from that zero, someone's ordering an airstrike. If the timer is stuck at zero, that means someone is ordering an airstrike. And... Also, someone, uh, when it, that red message comes up, that means uh, the enemy is ordering an airstrike. And if you're a stationary sniper-type mobile suit, that is an excellent time to go away. Because stationary targets are most likely to put uh, get uh, hit by the airstrike, and they are thus the most tempting targets. So, if you, uh, if you get the airstrike warning, which is probably what that red text is in a basic match you're going to want to move just to make sure you don't take the hit. Because those airstrikes are nasty. Let's see, lob out a grenade, hit neither of them, but didn't fall that far short. Fired right between that guy's legs. That that takes some real effort, I tell you. Um, see, actually just bad luck. I think I, uh, I think I broke his shield from the way he got stunned, and then I redlined my rifle to not quite kill him. But missed with that too. Grenades are redlined. Ah, rifle is redlined. Basically, the smart thing to do is back off because getting close would be dangerous, even with only 10 seconds left. I've got grenades now, though, so I can, you know, do some long range fighting. And now I'm just trying to get a shot in on something before time runs out, and there's just not enough of it. But I can't complain. Zero deaths. Got some good sniping done. Got like three kills. Um, I forget whether this was a rated match or not. Yes, yes it was. And it's one of the like two or three times I've gotten up to D plus before I got went back down to D minus. But anyway, that is the Jim Sniper. And that's going to do it for Gundam Battle Operation 2 for today. We'll be back with more tomorrow. So until next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!